It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. We've got a great podcast for you this morning. We're going to talk about personal training and financial planning. We don't call this show No Pain, No Gain for nothing. We're talking about how you're getting into physical health is very similar to getting your financial health in order. We're going to talk about financial jeopardy, just like the game show. We're going to test your financial knowledge with a couple different financial answers that you've got to give the questions to, just like the show. And we have our star financial advisor on the show today, Aaron Dessen. He's going to break down a real retirement plan he worked on, talk about all the different hidden fees this specific investor had in their portfolio, how they didn't have a game plan, and how he was able to help them get on their track to financial independence. You should check it out. It's going to be a great show. Bob, you know, we're not called no pain, no gain for no reason. You know, a lot of the principles from personal fitness uh, we can apply to our retirement planning. So I thought we could explore some of the similarities and learn how we can increase our level of financial fitness, applying it to our physical fitness. I love it, Ryan. Let's hear it. All right. Well, I mean, the first thing I think about is when it comes to your financial planning or if you're, you're going to train is you can't just go on the web, can't just read a book. A lot of times that's not going to get you all the knowledge you really need to make sure you're putting together the best plan. I can't agree more, Ryan, right? because you know when you read a book, first of all, you're a unique individual. Everything about you is unique, and there are rules of thumb, but they don't really apply to doing a financial plan. A financial plan is personal; it's intimate. And a book, yeah, it's a good place to start. But you know what I like about books from financial planning, Ryan? They help me sleep at night. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of dry financial books out there, but I think the other problem with it is too, it talks about a lot of things in theory. You know, when you look in retrospect yeah. and you see what the markets did and you, you see what you decisions you would have made, it's a little different than what happens in reality. Like, Bob, you've been in the business now for 45 years. I have to think you've seen some real stuff. I mean, you were there for the crash of 87. You were there during the tech bubble when that burst. I mean, you've seen, you've probably seen it all basically at this point. Well, you know, Ryan, I mean, over 45 years, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's kind of hard to believe I started in this business before you were born. That is kind of scary, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm saying you're old or anything, but I'm a lot older than you are. But, you know, here's the thing. You know, I started when I was 22 years old. And quite frankly, I was pathetic. You know, I didn't know anything. And I made a lot of mistakes over the last 45 years. That's why I think everyone needs a great financial advisor, great planner. Why make the same mistakes I already made? You know, why not hire someone to make sure you don't make those mistakes? Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, there's something about experience you can't discount because let's face it, when you're investing your money, especially for retirement, it's very emotional. And you think back to 2008, we can look at it in retrospect, said, well, you know, I survived 2008, but probably at the time, you didn't look at your statements. The news was telling you it was the end of the world. It was a horrible time and we forget about it in retrospect. But now you're 10 years older, the stakes are higher, and you know you need someone who's going to make sure that you're set up correctly. Bingo, Rise. You always do. You hit the nail right on the head. You know, everyone we've ever surveyed, what'd you do during the Great Recession? Oh, I stopped looking at my statements. I just uh, ignored it. Well, you know, all the return in your portfolio comes from bear markets. You ever hear me say that before, Ry? I have, Bob. It's a very famous Bobism. Thank you. But, you know, that's the truth, right? That's where the opportunities are. When, when everything's on sale, when there's, you know, people yelling fire in the audience and everybody's running out of the theater, you know, selling things at, at fire sale prices, that's where you make all your money. And if you're not looking at your statements, guess what? You don't know how to take advantage of it. That's why you need someone who keeps a cool head while you're losing yours. Yeah. And it just comes down to just the basics. Like I actually use a personal trainer I have for many, many years because I mean, I like to stay in shape, but for me to be accountable to myself every morning to go out and work out. Now, maybe I can do it a couple days a week, but just being that trainer twice a week. And that's somebody who's always thinking about new techniques, new ways to doing things. And I'm old. I'm getting older. Hard to believe. Um, and you know, we've adjusted my workout over the last 10 years because I am getting older. I don't, I'm not pumping iron like I was in my 20s. And it's the same with your portfolio. You need somebody who's thinking about those adjustments you need to make over time. And someone thinks about it all the time. Hey, Rob, if you're left to your own devices, you would do the same workout over and over again, right? You know, the definition of insanity 
is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. That's the beauty of having a personal trainer because they mix it up. They make it unique to you. And that's what a financial planner will do for you and your plan. Yeah, and it's okay. Look, you, if you have a lot of financial knowledge and you, you love the game and you study it, I think that's perfectly fine. But I think it's just really hard and stressful to go at it alone, especially when you're getting close to retirement and retirement now because the stakes are much higher. And I think a lot of times you think, well, if I give it to somebody else, I'm relinquishing control. And it's not really true. It's more collaborative. You have somebody now you can bounce ideas off of who can point out, hey, I know you're thinking to do this, but this way might be better. It's like having your own personal financial wing man or financial wing woman because most of our advisors are women. And that's absolutely right, Ryan. You couldn't be more right. I mean, let's take the other day. You drove down to Villanova to, to go out for a run with your old coach. And, you know, tell me the truth, son. Weren't there some times when you and your teammates were out a little bit late at the bar having a few beers too many? And you showed up the next day to work out, not because you wanted to, but because the coach was there looking for you. Oh, no, Bob, that never happened. We never went out and drank before <laughs> workouts the night before. No, yeah. So yes, no, well, yes. you're old, then it's so much easier if you're accountable to somebody, right, right? <laughs> no, that's right. And I think that also you know, kind of bring the track analogy into focus as well is whenever we got up for those runs on Saturday or whenever we did those workouts, we already knew what we were training for, right? We were training for a 10K race. I knew what time I wanted to hit. So we reverse engineered and then we made workouts around that. Same thing with your plan. You can't just have all these investments, wonder why you have them and they go up and down and you know there's no plan in place first. There's no goals first. You have to put the goals in place first. Then you put the investments in place. Most of us don't do it that way. Hey, Ryan, I met with a referral this week. Great guy, very successful, a lot of money. Had nine, ten different accounts, you know, seven, eight different advisors. Oh my I God. Said, Let's start at the beginning. Let's look at your goals. Let me see your written plan. He says, What written plan? I said, Really? Seven and eight advisors, nobody's put anything down in writing. Yeah. Hey, Rod, if you have goals and they're not written down, what do we call those? We call that a wish, Bob. Yeah, and you can't achieve your financial goals with wishes. I mean, it's like hope and prayer is great, but it's not a financial plan. You need a written plan. You need it written down. You need someone to hold you accountable to those goals and track your performance. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word bullish to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple, common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. 888. That's the word bullish, the 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com. Get a clear picture of your finances. I guess, you know, they got to open my eye. Let's get back to the show. So, Bob, I thought we'd have some fun today. I mean, we always have fun, obviously, here at No Pain, No Gain. But we could play a game of financial jeopardy, just like the show Jeopardy. I'll read you the answer, but then you have to respond in the form of a question. Sound good? Hey, right. Sounds like a great idea, but I've got some interesting news for you. It, this is my favorite show. Mom and I watch it every night. Believe it or not, we've become our parents. So this is what you have to look forward to <laughs> when you're my age. <laughs> That's right. You know it's all downhill when you're watching Jeopardy, and all due respect, Dad. <laughs> I do. I love it, Ryan. I got to tell you, I love it. I, I, it's my favorite show now. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start with the first answer. Known by many for its high fees and broken promises, this financial product has given a bad name to some of its cousins. What would you call that? Uh, that one's easy. What is a variable annuity? Yes. And everyone knows we love annuities on this show, or aka we don't love annuities on this show because they're very high cost. They're sold a lot, especially if you're getting close to retirement. And a lot of times, it's not a great deal for you. You know, Ryan, I had a, uh, an insurance agent tell me one time, he said, you know, Bob, I do the same thing for my clients as you do for yours. And I said, well, how's that? Well, I diversify their portfolio and I, I just wrap it in this thin veneer, hardly you know, perceived 
you know, rapper of insurance. I mean, I, I had to take a shower after I spoke to this guy. But, you know, I said, well, how much does that thin veneer rapper of insurance cost? <laughs> oh, not that much, you know, but it all added up to almost three, four percent when it was all said and done. Yeah. So think about this. If you're trying to grow your portfolio by five, six percent a year and then four percent is going into fees, you're down to like a two percent return. Bob, you're better off in a money market fund. That's just insane. It really is. And, it, and that's the thing. When you look at any portfolio, not just the variable annuity, but any portfolio, there's two costs involved. And the costs are, you know, the internal cost of the product, as they call it, and then the ad cost of the advice that you're getting. And you have to have those two costs broken down to truly know, you know, whether you have a good deal or not. And I'll tell you, Rye, I have never found a variable annuity to be a good deal. You can always do something else better and cheaper with that money. Yeah. And I would even say any kind of annuity, if you own one now, number one, understand what it does and you probably don't. So get that checked out, go to the insurance company directly, or you can work with an advisor like us to break down how that annuity really works. Or if you're being pitched an annuity, really do your homework. Not to say it won't work, but a lot of times, most times it's not the best deal. Bob, the second answer is this requires a financial advisor to put his or hers client's best interest before his or her own. Unfortunately, not all financial professionals are governed by it. What do we call this? Oh, this is an easy one, right? This is a layup, as we say. What is the fiduciary standard? Yes. And a lot of people probably are saying to themselves, I don't know what the heck does that mean? And that simply <laughs> means, Bob, if you're a fiduciary, and believe it or not, most financial planners are not, even if they call themselves that, it means that they have to act in your best interest by law. And hard to believe, but most financial advisors don't have to act in your best interest. It's crazy. No, it is. It's really insane. I mean, why would you want to have something as important as the money that you've worked so hard to earn You know, with someone who doesn't have to put your interest first? They can put their firm's interest first, their interest first. Hey, Rye, you know what's the best way to figure out if you truly have a fiduciary working for you? The best way, Bob, I think maybe just ask your advisor if they're fiduciary. I'll tell you what you ask for. Ask them for a copy of their statement and see if they're investing in exactly what they're recommending to you. And if they're not, why not? Yeah, that's a great point. Because if it's that great that they're going to put in your portfolio, then wouldn't it be that great for their own portfolio? And you'd be surprised, right? I mean, a lot of cases, the advisor that's recommending products or things for you doesn't own the same things in their portfolio. And to me, that's a big, big red flag. Yeah, unfortunately, when you don't have a fiduciary, they're not motivated by doing what's in best for you. They're motivated by what's doing best for their family. And that usually requires you paying the most for an investment, more than you necessarily should. It's when you end up being overcharged by your financial advisor. Yes, and it's important to find that out because even if it's a financial advisor or broker from a big brokerage house like a Morgan Stanley, Merrill Lynch, they're not typically a fiduciary. So they actually don't, even though they're bigger and you would think bigger would be better, they don't have to act in your best interest. And that's a big, big problem, especially in the environment that we're actually in today. Hey, Rye, I got the best advice I could give you right now. I'm writing it down. Trust, but verify. You know, I met with a gentleman this week. He had lots of money and he had two or three advisors that were charging him, not 100% more than what we or some other fiduciary would charge but two to 300% more. One was his brother-in-law and the other was his neighbor. Now, he didn't know it. So, you know, be trusting, but verify. Get a second opinion. Yeah, that's it. Just get a second opinion. If everything's right, then great, but it's nice to have that verified. I love that. I think that's an old Russian saying, trust, but verify. The next answer, Bob, is this financial phenomenon is thought by some to be eminent and by others to be far off in the distance but there's no denying that it will be back eventually. Well, Rye, that's a good old market correction. But when you look at the sentiment readings of individual investors today, I think we're talking more about a market crash. Yes. I mean, it's like, get ready for another apocalypse. It's always around the corner, but it just seems like when you watch the financial news, it's like tomorrow. Well, the one thing that I want you to realize is that market crashes are very rare. I mean, we had one in 2008. We had one in 1999. And then we had another one all the way back in 1929. They're very, very rare. You know, corrections are normal. Crashes are not very normal. And, you know, I think if you think about it, 
you know, the last financial crash we had was in 2008. The one previous was 79 years. Most of us won't be around for the next one, right? Yes, that's true. I mean, statistically speaking, these big crashes don't happen that often, but you would think from watching the news, they happen like every year and it's just not true. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so there's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844 752 6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Here's this week's spotlight a no pain, no gain. And this is our spotlight segment. You know, every week what we do is we dissect a real financial plan and we uncover what we call those flaws or pain points, spell P A Y N E, so our listeners can avoid the same mistakes with their planning and investing. And you worked on a case recently, so why don't you give us the rundown and tell us how, how you helped this couple get on their path to what we call their financial independence? Absolutely. Met with a couple recently. A uh, gentleman is a small business owner and has an opportunity to sell his business at a nice profit. Um, so he wanted to know, you know, what were his options for investing this money? What does that look like over the long term? And really, you know, what does my projection look like? Can I retire on this date? And how do I how do I get from A to B? So what did it look like? Well, you know, he needed to make some changes. Um, he, he really needed to start saving more aggressively and uh, really put this lump sum that he's getting from the sale of the business to work for him. Um, really in passive investments that are just generating income. After plugging all his numbers into our 360 portal um, and looking over his investments, we were able to take that money and generate over $134,000 a year in income from the portfolio. Wow. The other thing I noticed too, I mean, how old is this gentleman? Uh, this gentleman is in his early 60s. I mean, he has a pretty hmm. aggressive portfolio for someone that's getting ready to retire. Um, you know, Looking at the portfolio that's structured now, it's like, the market goes down and he could lose, I don't know, 30, 40% of his portfolio based on his current allocation. That's right. And it's something that we see nine times out of 10. The bulk of his his investments in equities or in stock markets is all in your US large cap or your S&P 500. Yeah, we're starting to see a lot of that, a lot of concentration in one small area. But the other thing that caught my attention, Aaron, is the amount of fees that he was paying to these wirehouse brokers. It seems like they set these fees 10, 20, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And nobody ever revisits it. I mean, they're almost twice as much as what we, we typically see in a portfolio we manage. You know, Bob, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, and it's really glaring when you put these numbers to paper. I mean, that was one of the first things that he said is, hey, why am I paying double the fee? What am I getting for it? And, you know, the reality <laughs> is you're not getting anything for it. <laughs> you mean he wasn't getting double the return? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't getting double the return. He's definitely not getting double the service. Nobody's sitting down with him on an annual basis, updating these projections and taking a long-term view you know, of what his financial situation is. What a great business, yeah. right? You can take someone's money, you can charge them a fee and absolutely do nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> like if people, if you really knew what you were paying, and that's the thing is a lot of times the fees are hidden, like in this portfolio, it's not like if he had an invoice every quarter for the amount he was being charged, I imagine he'd, he'd have some issue with this. But the fact he can't see the fees... You know, I guess he's okay with the fact he's getting no service. And that was actually one of his one of his pain points. And one of the things that he brought up right away was that he really didn't like how his current advisor wasn't keeping him in the loop. He felt like he wasn't calling him and letting him know what he was doing or why they were doing it. Um, and he was just kind of in the dark on the total portfolio. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. I see a lot of people that don't know what they own, don't know why they own it, because no one ever told them. And, uh, you know, they kind of give it to, oh, I'm the expert. Just, uh, you know, don't worry about it. Well, you know, you need to worry about it. You need to know, you know, what you want. You need to know what the costs are. And, and you need to know if that person that you're working with is a fiduciary who's actually doing the same thing with their own money or just has this special expensive deal for you. 
Yeah, and that's the other thing too is just by you know having these accounts in different places, it looks like he was kind of overcharging himself as well because clearly by putting all these assets together, he's entitled to some discounts that he wasn't by having you know money spread out at different firms. Yeah, what I love, Aaron, is now that you have a 360 financial portal, they can check in and see where they are at any time. You can put the performance reports right in their vault. You can put the, uh, you know, any type of uh, retirement planning projections right into their vault. And, you know, you, they don't have to wait for you. You don't have to wait for them. And, uh, you know, it's, it just makes the conversation that much more simple. And you make common sense decisions because now you have an informed investor who knows what they own and they know why they own it. You know, Bob, that's that's so important that, you know, we're a- able to educate our clients on what they're invested in, why, and they're able to educate us on what their goals are and what they're trying to achieve. And just like you said, you know, we could put everything on the portal. Everything's completely transparent and everyone's on the same page. It just makes for a much I mean, smoother you simply, relationship. You simply took this family from someone who's never seen a wealth projection. Nobody's ever taken the time to do a plan to right now they have it in real time every day, anytime they feel like looking at it. All right at their fingertips. Sounds well, like having- a good deal to me, Rye. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so it's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844-752-6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, Check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting BeBullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, Be Bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.